Welcome to FedScoop TV. I'm Wyatt Cash, and we're here today at the IT Modernization Summit. And joining us is Chris Howard. Chris is Vice President for Nutanix Federal. Chris, thanks for being with us. Thank you very much for having me. Appreciate right. it. Yeah. So, um, starting off on IT modernization, uh, as you uh, work with a variety of agencies, mm -hmm. what are some of the current barriers you're still seeing to uh, agencies' efforts to modernize their IT systems? I think there's uh, there's a number of them. The first and probably most important is the, the CR and just lack of budget. Everybody's fighting for a, a limited uh, amount of funding these days, so I think that's kind of stifling some of the innovation. Um, plus a lot of the budget, not just related to CR, is going towards legacy technology. So about 75% of the budget is pretty much taken off the table just to support the legacy IT infrastructure. Mm -hmm. So that's probably the first and, and most, uh, most important. I think the second one is um, within the government, what we noticed at least being a newer company to the, the federal arena is a lot of restrictive uh, regulations or restrictive specifications in IT requirements. So when, um, when companies like ourselves, when we try to go out and, and do uh, acquisitions in the federal government, a lot of times um, there's a lot of legacy mindset. And so when they write these specifications, it has a lot of um, old technology built into it. Uh, one example that I always think of is similar to you know, if, if the U.S. Army was going to buy a bunch of cars and they specified carburetors, then Tesla would have no, uh, no opportunity to compete. Right. And it's the same way in IT. Um, and last, I think, and this one's the diff probably the, one of the most difficult to overcome is the culture. Um, a lot of people, uh, when I say culture, I mean the workforce that have been in those positions for quite some time, um, they're resistant to change. Mm -hmm. A lot of times they think change would mean uh, maybe their job would be impacted or limited or wouldn't give them enough opportunity. So I think those three um, are probably the most significant ones I can, I can think of. Mm -hmm. And recognizing those challenges, uh, what uh, do you see CIOs being able to do in the face of that to enable their teams to still try to move forward with IT modern? Yeah, I think when, I think what they need to do and what a lot do is they need to empower or enable their people and they can do that through training to remain relevant from a skill set perspective. Everybody wants the opportunity to feel like they contribute. So the more you empower your workforce and let them be involved, you know, they go home at the end of the day and actually think they took part of something instead of just going to a regular nine to five and just another mm -hmm. cog in the wheel. So I think the more uh, empowerment that they have, at least from what I see when I go into organizations uh, where the CIO or, or that level staff has given them the ability to architect and execute and design based on what they believe is the right technology at the right time and the right performance and all the characteristics. Uh, those are some of the more um, impressive organizations that you go into. Ones where it's just dictated down to them and their day-to-day -day job is just to support what's there and just kind of business as usual. Mm -hmm. um, they're not as uh, open-minded and they're certainly not as, as aggressive in doing what's right for the customer, in my mm -hmm. opinion. And as you um, look at the variety of IT systems, mm -hmm. uh, which ones do you feel are more poised or poised more uh, uh, sooner than later for IT modernization? Yeah, that's a, a pretty simple one in, in, in my own view. It's the th legacy three-tiered architecture. Mm -hmm. So when you look at having silos of compute, silos of storage, and silos of network, um, it creates a lot of complexity in the environment, and it, uh, it causes just a, a ton of problems down the line, whether it's security, administration, complexity, mm -hmm. scaling. So I think uh, just looking at new ways to architect infrastructure and get out of that siloed mentality is probably the quickest way that we could see innovation and uh, benefits to the government organization. Mm -hmm. um, doubling back to workforce, and mm -hmm. you mentioned training, but what other, uh, uh, when we think about the role of culture and workforce, uh, the sort of non-technical side, what are <laughs> some of the uh, things that agencies could also do more of to help um, speed up modernization? I think that, um, well, there's the training, obviously, which we already touched on. From a culture perspective, I think that giving the people the empowerment or ability to go out and investigate and research new technologies, uh, learn new technologies, and not just remain stagnant with a certain certain type of uh, technical feature set. Um, people want the opportunity to participate. People want the opportunity to have a, a say in what's the direction moving forward. So I think it comes back, and I know this is somewhat repetitive, but it comes back to empowering those people to have the ability to contribute. People want and feel the need to say, you know what, what I did today made a difference. Mm -hmm. And that's, that's the most important thing to me. I'm not sure that 100% answers the question because it's kind of repetitive, but that, I think that's, that's what we need to see more of in the government workforce. Yep. 
Uh, and then lastly, let's talk a little about cybersecurity mm -hmm. and how it's sort of uh, converging with uh, other needs around IT modernization. Sure. Um, well, cybersecurity is big, obviously. Uh, there's a lot of threats that are constantly trying to get into our systems. And it's, it's somewhat vulnerable because it's uh, so much legacy technology. So security and everything that revolves around security is always a bolt-on. You're trying to secure stuff that was never meant to really be secured or it's very difficult to secure. And that's why companies like Nutanix, and I'm sure there's others out there, um, security and cybersecurity efforts are part of our DNA. So we build that into our uh, software development life cycle. So everything we do is security focused because we own the technology. We know more about the technology than anyone else and so do other IT manufacturers. The onus of security should be on them because they developed the product, they should know how to secure it better. If you just drop off a solution at a government uh, data center, it, it's somewhat difficult for them to figure out not only how to secure that, just that individual piece, but there's a whole lot of communications that go on between different technologies. So you're having to plug in holes everywhere. And so vendors, and, and we do this on a day-to-day -day basis, we put all of that security pressure on ourselves. We follow all the, the DOD and government regulations around um, STIGs and hardening and compliance. So when that solution shows up at the customer site, all of that should be done. Mm -hmm. It's just another component of your technology. And I think that's the biggest problem that I see in government data centers today is that trying to secure all of these different silos of technologies right. is incredibly complex and I'm not sure there's a, a really easy way to do that. So when manufacturers start taking that onus on themselves and deliver a product that already has those components and security uh, certifications built in, it takes a lot of weight and pressure off what the government's trying to do. They're busy enough trying to serve up applications to their, to their end users and their customers. Security can overwhelm them to the point where what they're delivering may not be sufficient to their customers. Yeah, that's a great point. Well, Chris Howard, thank you so much for sharing. Some thank you, I appreciate it. Yeah, and appreciate your being with us today. Thank so. you. And uh, I'm Wyatt Cash with FedScoop TV. Thanks for watching.